Just like the framing of a house organizes its structure, Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML for short, is the foundational structure of the web that organizes content on web pages. To create an HTML page, start by opening a folder in an editor like VS Code and then create an index.html file. Browsers will automatically recognize this file as your home page. Before we create any content, we need to set up the structure of our page. The doc type element will declare that this is an HTML document. The HTML element will start the document and specify that the language is English. The head element will contain metadata about our document that the browser will use. The first meta element will set our char set equal to UTF-8. This specifies the character encoding. Don't be too worried about what this means. Just understand that you need it to make your website work. The next meta element will ensure the page scales properly on different screen sizes, making it mobile friendly. To name our document, we can use the title element and whatever we put here will appear in the browser tab. Next, we'll create the body element, which will contain all of the content that displays on our web page. Let's take a look at this in our browser, and you guys will notice that nothing is displaying because we haven't created any content yet, with the exception of our title element that you guys can see in the browser tab. To add text to our page, we can use headings. There are headings from one to six. A H1 heading will be the main heading, the H2 will be a subheading, the H3 through H6 will be lower subheadings. If we view all of these in our browser, you guys will see that the H1 element is the largest and then they get smaller as we get towards the H6 element. And this also shows the hierarchy of these elements. To add larger blocks of text, we can use the paragraph element and simply include that text within. To list items on our page, we can use the ordered list, and for each item that we want to have, we need to include that within a list element like I'm doing here. We can also use an unordered list, which is exactly the same as the ordered list, except that it displays with bullet points instead of numbers. Organizing and structuring HTML content is essential when creating web pages, and there are two main ways to do so. First, you have the div element, which is a generic container that is used to group elements together and also later apply CSS styling. The section element is exactly the same as the div, except that it's a semantic element that helps represent distinct sections of content. So here you can see we have a div element with an H2 and a paragraph inside. Then we have a section element, which actually displays a distinct section of content relating to recipes. To add images to your project, create an images folder and paste in all of the images you want to use. Then create an image element and the SRC is going to be used to navigate to where you're storing that image within your project. So for example, we have it stored within our images folder, and then we're just navigating to the name of that image. And you guys will know that you're doing it right when you can see it in your browser. And don't forget about alternative text. This is essential for people that might be using screen readers to link to different pages within your project or to another website entirely, you can use the anchor element. And the href attribute is where you're going to put the link to that web page or another website entirely like google.com. And when you click on this in your browser, it will take you to that web page or website where you want to go to. Semantic elements are essential in HTML because they clearly describe meaning and purpose to the browser. A few examples of these are going to be the nav element, which is used for navigation links, the main element, which is used to wrap the main content of your page, the section, which groups related content together, the button, which declares something clickable, and the footer that contains footer information normally located at the bottom of a web page. The form element is used to create interactive and dynamic 
forms. Inside of this form, we can create an input element and we can set the type to multiple different things. But for now, we'll just set it to text, which is going to set it up as a text field where users can enter whatever text that they want. And to add better context to this, we can also create a label element. So here you can see that name is the label and you can see the input showing up and we can enter our name. Now it's time to go try this for yourself. Play around with the HTML elements and see what you can come up with. If you guys want a more in-depth tutorial, click the link up top or down in the description. If you need any help or have any questions, reach out to me through the comments below.